Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Si unajua ni vizuri kuwa katika nyumba ya Bwana. Daudi anasema alifurahi sana alipoalikwa kwenda katika nyumba ya Bwana. Hallelujah. I don't know whether you are that excited about coming to the house of the Lord or you came because ulisukumwa. You are here because you wanted to be here. Then kaa kama mtu ambaye ako tayari kubarikiwa. Na ukibarikiwa wewe ubarikike. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. We have been talking about the practice, the Christian practice or disciplines or or I, I don't want to call them doctrines because if you pull them out of proportion uh, you might end up becoming somebody else. But these are disciplines that Christians pursue, things that help them become what God has intended them to be. I want to talk about prayer. And um, somebody said, and I agree with him, that nobody can teach you to pray until you start praying. Or in other words, if, if you want to learn to pray, then you have to start praying. It is like, as I continue praying, then God releases me and puts me in the place of praying. And there are no experts. I know there are some of us, because of the fact that we are called intercessors, it's like a special group. But you see, praying is for every one of us. Praying is for every one of us. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, even you, you are an intercessor. Yes. We need to get to that level where praying is not because I'm having food. Oh yes, I want to pray because prayer means something to me as an individual and as a Christian. Prayer, I know many times when we talk about prayer, if you talk to a muzungu about praying, they will tell you, I have no need, why should I pray? But praying is not for needs. Praying is a way of communicating with our God. So I will pray to the Lord with a need or without a need because in my prayer I'm talking to him, I'm communicating with him, I'm releasing myself to him, I'm connecting myself with him. So never, 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 never say that I'm not going to pray because I don't have a need. You have a need of a savior whether you have everything you need or you, you don't have it. You have a need of a savior. Prayer is, is important for us. Prayer is important for us. Kuna sauti metoka kwa... Unasikia Alex, eh? Nashindwa mnyama aliingilia wapi hapa. Prayer. But you see, when I look at the Old Testament, I find God is calling people to have communion with him. He's calling them, come and seek me, and if you seek me, you'll find me. It's like God desires us to walk with him, to have fellowship with him. To, he desires us to have communion with him. And when I open up myself to the Lord, then God is able to meet me, to reach me in the place where I am. But in the New Testament, I find Jesus is being asked by his disciples because the disciples were watching the disciples of John the Baptist. And they discovered there is something John the Baptist's disciples knew. But the disciples of Jesus didn't. So they are coming to him and they are asking him, Lord, teach us how to pray like our brother John has taught his disciples. We, we, we also want to learn how to, to pray. And I, and I want to start there. I want to, that in the New Testament, Jesus gives us how to pray. He, he's not teaching us. I know we call it the Lord's Prayer, but it's the Lord's Prayer actually, and somebody reminded me, and I thank God I went to Remafest. He reminded me and he said, the Lord's Prayer is found in the Gospel of John chapter 17 where the Lord is praying for his disciples. But as he was teaching them how to pray, it is a model. It's like uh, 
when you pray, don't forget these things. It's like when you're praying, uh, approach God this way, and after you approach him this way, recognize him this way, and after you recognize him this way, acknowledge what God is doing, acknowledge that you have, you have some weakness, uh, ask him for his provision, and ask him to protect you from temptation. So he, it's a model. I, I, know, I know there are a lot of us, when you pray that, you think you have prayed. You haven't. You have just repeated the model. It's like you're saying one, two, three, four, five, up to ten, and then you leave class, you say, Sasa mimi ni mesoma. The teacher wanted me to say one to ten. So I said one to ten, then I'm learned. You are not. You, what you have is just a model. And you should use that model to help you as you pray. And, and I want to talk about the Lord's Prayer or the model that he taught us. But in it, there are seven things that I think are important. I I'm, I'm just want to, play, uh, to put in some background as I share what I want to share with us. But in that model, there are some seven things that are important for me as I pray. Anytime I pray. This is in Matthew uh, chapter 6. If you can put me verse 5 and 6 in the New King James, verse 5 and 6 of chapter 6 of the book of Matthew. This is what the Bible says. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the street, that they may be seen by men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. He starts that way. Verse number six. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into the closet. And when thou shut the door, pray to the Father which is in secret, and thy father which sees in secret shall reward thee openly. Now, it starts by trying to let you know that although there is what we call corporate prayer, Jesus is so concerned about you as an individual, how you pray. He wants to say prayer, and I find this as the first point, that God wants me as I pray to know it is an audience of me and him. So in other words, when I pray, I shut everything out. That's why I cannot pray when my phone is on. That's why I cannot pray when the TV is showing up. That's why I cannot pray when I'm also eating. It becomes difficult. When, when I know that, then I will shut. It is like I want to shut myself and get to a closet or get to a place where there is no disturbance. Get to a place where there is no dis disturbance and there I want to commune with the Lord. And he tells me, if I do it in any other way, I have my reward. If I do it in any other way for people to see me, I have my reward. If I am doing it so that others can call me a prayer, uh, then I have my reward. But he's saying, no, 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 don't do it that way. Get yourself and close yourself in and pray. So the first thing that I want you to know when we are talking about this discipline of prayer is that Jesus is teaching his disciples and he's telling them and he's warning them about the danger of performing. Performing, because that kind of prayer is performing. You know, I know I have said this and I would say it again. I went to a, to a church uh, and those are the years that they had just come from the Muzungus that were uh, were the, the, the preachers and the priests. Now, the Muzungus, when they are speaking our language, they, they, used to, they used to speak it with an accent. And um, the accent, actually, there are some churches even now, they still read our vernacular with that accent because they think that is the Holy Ghost. But it was a Muzungus problem with the, some pronunciation. So I go to this church and I'm given the Bible and I know how to read Kikuyu. I have no problem. But I picked the Bible and I wanted to put that tune of that Muzungu who is trying to speak Kikuyu into it. And you know, I tried three times and I couldn't. You know, that kind of... And I tried three times and couldn't go through. Until one sister came up and told me, well, pastor, sit down. And she read without an accent. She read it. When I left, 
What was I doing? I was performing. So you can do it with performance. Performance is where you are so concerned about your accent, your language, your everything. At your kishirab kidogo mbaka useme pole pole. Pole, yule ashike as ishike. Hiyo iko hivyo. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. So when I'm praying and I'm not performing, the language that I'm using, I will use the language that God can understand. Our late brother cannot use to say, every time he prayed in Kimeru, Morungu, you know, he felt that Morungu had him. Watch I, Jehovah and so on. And I know some of you also, because of where you come from, you know when you say, Jehovah, you know, guy, you know that kind of, but Jesus is warning us that when we go to pray, shut that feeling out. You know, shut yourself out. Now communicate with me. Talk to me. Talk to me. So Jesus is, con is telling them that you need to be careful when you are praying. He urges them. They, you have to pray in a way that it is God because those others, they receive their reward. How do they receive their reward? Uliskiaje hiyo kizungu? Hai, uyo jamaa. Alikuwa na kiinglish kiinglish. So in other words, people never even had the prayer. They had the language. So you performed. And what do you do? You get your reward. I pray that God is going to help us so that when we come to pray, we will pray. I'm just laying foundation. I haven't even started saying. I told you there are seven things that I find in that what Jesus was trying to tell them. In verse number nine, he, he, he turns around. He says, now, close yourself out. And then in verse na, na, number nine, he says, now, this is how you do, you do it. Those are the manners and behaviors, but now, now you are ready. You have closed yourself. You're in your own closet. Now start this way. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In other words, what, what, what Jesus is trying to tell disciples, and I want to tell you, is that when we start prayer and we are praying and we have closed ourselves to a closet, we need to know that that God that people fear, that God that brought fire, that God, he is my father. Do you know seeing the president is not easy? Have you, ever, have you ever known that? Before you see him. Hmm. I had gone to Rema first. And I was placed in front. Pallet belly. Nitaka tukai huko nyuma wakatugundua na mungai. Wakatulete mungai ya kaka nyuma nikaleto hapo mbele. Then I saw some guys who came, almost 10 of them, and they wanted to interrupt, to interrupt. The preacher was preaching. They wanted to interrupt. And the security, our security, thank God, they stopped them. But one of the guys was so annoyed. He's being told there is a seat for your person, but the seat is there and you cannot pass here. You have to pass behind and because I was the seat number three and they were there, I would look at them and here we are listening to the word of God. And here are people who are not concerned about what is going on. They are just concerned that they have someone and they want to place him into, into a seat somewhere. So finally, they didn't pass by and they were shown where the seat was. And the seat was for the, uh, the, 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 the lady number two, uh, Pastor Dorcas. And, and then she comes. Wow. With all the clamor, with her team now. <laughs> but, but that's not the point. The point is, <laughs> the point is, if, if that was my mother, right? right. Just think, I was, that was my mother. And I am three years old. I will be screaming when people are pushing me aside. Because that's not my dep that's not deputy. To me, that's not deputy. That's my mother. And this is what Jesus is telling his disciples. 
When you go to pray to that God they fear out there, you start by saying, my father. You can go to his bedroom and call him, my father, daddy, wake up. I need this and I need the other. That is the approach when I go to pray to the Lord. He wants you to know that when I go to him, he is my father. Amen. Tell your neighbor, God is my father. And is, if he's my father, what does he not know about me? Ile kamasi na teremukaka pandei. Wakati niko na mvua usiku imenyesha. Nipali niko ni melala. Yani meoko na mvua. Nani hajui? Uwe babasi ya najua. So as I go to him. Hakuna, hakuna atikoja kwanza niende ni kaoga. Ni naoga nini? My father. Who? Where are you? You are in heaven. It is like I want to close myself. And after I close myself. I go to my father. And I say my father. I know where you are. I know where you are. You know, some of us pray to a God that we don't know where he is. But I know where my father is. And nobody can stop me. I thank God that Gabriel, Michaeli, and all the others cannot stop me when I want to talk to God. Because the number he has given me is direct. Amen. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. he is your father. So as you pray, pray like he is your father. I have children myself. And when they come to talk to me, they, when they leave there, they don't look like chicken that water has fallen on them. Apana, wana toka wakijua vile walitaka, washa pata. Ama, kama wajapata wameniambia. So they go saying, situmemuambia. Bas. So as you ya kutenda, sini yake. So when I tell my father also, sidi toke tu, natoka na mnagani, nimesha muambia. Kwa hivyo, shuguli ya kutenda ni ya nani? Ni yake. I pray that God can help us to understand that. Yani nimekuja kanisani, nimeomba, nikitoka hapa, kama nilikuja nimeinama, naenda nimeinuka, kwa sababu nini? Nimeomba. Nilimuambia kuhusu hajazangu. And I leave it to the Lord. We are talking to our father. Ata kama president Ni nani? Na ni baba yako. You know, my children don't call me bishop. Did you know that? Ati tukiongea, ongea wana sama, sasa bishop. Unajua bishop? No, I'm not their bishop. I'm not. But when they come here, they call me bishop. I know you know there is one who calls me bishop here. So that one calls me bishop here because we are here. Lakini tukitoka hapo. Yes, the D. I find something else, and, and I, don't, I don't know even whether I'll start preaching today. Maybe I'll just tell you those things, then I'll preach some other time. But it's, it's important for me to know that this habit, this discipline of prayer, helps me. Number three, if there is any prayer that I'm going to pray, wherever I'm going to pray, verse number 10, it has to align my will with that of God. Verse number 10 says what? It says what? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth, as it is where? In heaven. So in other words, as I approach him, I also know that first of all, I'll have to align my thought and my plans and everything with his plans and desires. Thy will, which is in heaven, let it be done here. So that down here is connected with what is done in heaven. So when I'm praying for healing, it's because in heaven, hakuna ugonjwa. So when I'm praying for provision, because in heaven, actually they walk on the streets that are paved with gold. In other words, I'm telling God, what is out there, oh God? Allow it to be here. And turn this place where I am to be a little heaven so that your perfect will is done here. Remember we started by you hiding yourself in a closet. You are not performing. He is your father. He is an audience of one. You are telling him, God, thy will be done. His will actually is best. And we need to pray that God's will should align our will. And we cannot do anything else. May God help me as I pray.
In the book of Psalms 127 and verse number 1. This point number four, just hold it there. This point number four is that God is the one who provides us everything we have. Because the Bible says, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor. Those who build it, they labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. In other words, as I pray, we must rely on God for whatever we need for every day. Every day, whatever. You see, when we talk about daily bread and so on and so forth, we are not just talking about bread, bread, bread. We are talking about daily needs, all my needs, all my needs, all my wants. So I approach God and I know God as I pray. So in other words, if you are praying, remember where we started? In your own closet. Everything you have put out. And then you are calling him your father who, where, who is in heaven and you are telling him his will to be done down as it is down here. And then you are telling him right here where I am, I have needs. I have needs and I have wants. May you meet me at the point of our very need. So Jesus is teaching his disciples that when they come to him, he has everything. He has everything. And now I'm speaking to Christians here. If God has ever answered any prayer, any prayer, whether it is one time you are praying for a sweet, peremende, okuwa mdogo, na ikakuja. It doesn't matter how it came. Maybe with an uncle or another auntie or your father. That should let you know that aliye kuletea, tuseme kwa mfano, aliye kuletea peremende. Are you sure? Anaweza nunua peremende moja tu? Si sosi yake inaweza kuwa na peremende nyingi. The same thing about my God. If God has ever done anything for me, it simply means he can still do more from his source. Ni mimi nirimuitisha hiyo. Kwa hivyo, I can even ask for more. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So in my prayer, I will acknowledge that all that I need and whatever my needs are of every day, the Lord has it for me as I pray. Another lesson that I find in that passage, those uh, words of prayer that Jesus was teaching his disciples, is that we are sinners and we need grace. So anytime you are in prayer, remember that. That it is important for you to know, first of all, you are a sinner. Don't justify yourself. You know, there, there, is, a, there is a problem of some of us when we go to pray to the Lord, we want to remind him who we are. Oh God. You know, in that church, Shiloh, the other day I'm the one who gave more. Hallelujah. Don't I look great? Actually, I'm not like so and so. Kwanza so and so alikuja church. Unge mwona hata nywili haiko imechanuliwa. Lakini mimi nikuwa nimechana yangu, nimepaka mafuta. You know, God, has, remember where we started? He is my father. He knows me. I cannot impress him. So let's not try to impress him. He knows. So we tell him what we are. We are sinners who need his grace. Every day as you go to pray, I'm a sinner and I need his grace. I need God's grace to deliver me. God's grace to lead me. God's grace to work in my life. Finding grace for our sin is the path of every human religion seeks to solve. Whether it is through animal sacrifice, as in, in traditional religion, or the gospel. That gospel of forgive yourself, or other religion, where the goal is to remove the stain of sin. Whatever religion you find yourself, the cry of that religion is that God, you will Deliver me. So for us as Christians, let's never forget the beauty and simplicity of what Jesus asked us to do. All we are to say is, Father, forgive me. Father, forgive me. And my offense is removed. And I walk as a new creature. 
Lesson number six. I told you seven lessons, and this was my foundation so that I can start preaching. Are you ready for my preaching? Yes. Are you sure? <laughs> it's good to know in verse number 12, God's forgiveness is conditional. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our, our debtors. And this Jesus has explained it with parables in the Bible. Of somebody that was forgiven, but when he went out, he met somebody who owed him, put him into prison. So in other words, as I am forgiven, it is the same measure of my, if I don't forgive others, why do I expect God to forgive me? If you don't forgive your neighbor, why do you expect God to forgive you? So it is conditional, and this is what is important for us, that all the petitions are there. But when it comes to forgiveness, it's conditional. God has forgiven us our sins, but he also requires something for us. It is not our forgiving of others answers the right to have our own sins forgiven by God. Rather, the point is that God only forgives the repentant, and a good sign of repentance is that we forgive others. Because if I know how much God has forgiven me, I will forgive others. I will look at others and say, there goes I, it if it was not for the grace of God. So I will never sit back and step on others. Finally, it's verse number 13. Because again, as I pray, I told you those are lessons that you can pick from there. Because God wants, us, wants me to pray. And it has to be my tradition to pray. But as I pray, there are those Seven, and you could make them even more. You could have ten of them and so on, but you can have these seven, or four, or three, or two, whatever. But the point is, you can label as you pray to the Lord. Number seven is, we need the help of God to avoid temptation. And that's what he says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. You see, the final potential may seem surprising to many people. You may ask. Surely, God doesn't lead people into temptation, does he? After all, doesn't James tell us, let no one say that when he's tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot tempt with evil, and he himself tempts no one. The answer lies in the fact that the Greek word used here, paraiso, is translated differently in the New Testament. Depending on the context, as a trial, or a test, or temptation, the Bible makes it abundantly clear that God does indeed bring trials to his people, bring tests to his people, and the trials are supposed to refine them, to help them. Now the danger is that sometimes what God wants me to go through so that I can become what he wants me to be, I push it around and I call it but you see, Jesus is telling his disciples, when you pray, you go to the Lord and you tell the Lord, lead me not into temptation. Lord, let there be no trials on my way. Let there be no tests on my way. Lead me, help me, sort me out. I don't want to go back like Job. I want Lord God, help me. My, the trials that only you can bring, the temptation that you can only bring, you can deliver me from that. Now, that is one point. How about the second point? When we pray this petition, we are saying to God, I know there are things that will happen to me. Please don't bring them to me, but also deliver me from all evils. Why? Because the kingdom is yours. The power is yours. The glory is yours. Shetani hana nguvu hata. Na shetani hawezi kutushinda hata. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Sijaanza kuhubiri na nimemaliza. I want to say a couple of other things so that I can appear like what I promised you I did. Maybe, maybe read. Okay, let me not read the scripture, but I tell you a couple of things that I think prayer does for us as believers. 
Number one, prayer can help us focus on what is important. And that's what Jesus is teaching his disciples. That as you pray, you focus on the things that are important. Wacha kuwa unaomba alafu unaanza kukimbiza na shetani. I don't know whether you have known that. When you lift up your hands here and you are praying immediately na kuonesha nguo uliwacha nje kunataka kunyesha na hiyo sasa unasahau kuomba unaanza kuomba mvua isinyeshe and so on ama unataka kukimbia usimamishe mvua ama utoe nguo kwa kwa, kwa nini whatever ama sasa ile umeinua mikono tu ndio nakukumbusha uliwacha ka kitu kwa oven na time ile inaendelea kanaweza ungua kwa oven you see what what prayer does if you are serious about it it will cause you to be focusing on the things that are important. Bwana Yesu wasifiwe. Focus on what is important. Prayer can help us to stay hopeful even when there are dark moments. When I pray, as I told you, I will leave it with my father. Then I will start leaving. Inaita kwa Gen Z. When they occupied, because they also occupied here. Ama huku waona basi wao wajui wako area hata saa hii wako humu humu tu majenzi wako area hii but it got to a time <laughs> amen <laughs> najua mtanisalimia ni sawa <laughs> it got to a time it got to, 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 to a time that it, it became nasty because you see the young people were not armed they were walking and any young person who wanted to steal, they dealt with him. But there are some hooligans that came in and they could not handle them. Now it, it was like serious. And I'm telling you for sure, if you are a police officer, you Gen Z, ugongwe na mawe na mtu. Akugonge na mawe. Pa. Na kwa neema, huku beba karungu, ulikuwa na risasi. Na kwa sababu mawe imekugonga na pale imeanguka hujui, yani uchukue urudishe. Utafanya nini? Sinirisasi. So we started praying, oh God, help our young people. Kikiumana waone kuna watu wameingia na si watu wazuri, hiyo maandamano. Waiwache tu. Because they were going with the phone. Can you imagine mtu anaenda na simu, anapiga picha, anaokota message, ye yeah, hana kitu ingine. That's why there were many messages. Situ nipata message nyingi vile polisi anasema akikutukana wewe huna kitu kingine ni simu tu kumbe umerecord yeye na umempiga picha kwa sababu wengine mnapigwa selfie and so on and so forth. Now the bigger mistakes that we did was even those ones. So what was the prayer for the parents because <laughs> si tuko nao si ni watoto wetu si wajukuu wetu ni kuwaombea. Ati mzazi anapigia msiana wake ako 20. Eh ngania where are you? Ah dad. Ujui kule tuko? Tuko Nairobi. <laughs> Tunafanya maandamano. Moyo wa mzazi karibu usimame lakini anajipa moyo anasema basi ni sawa eh, basi usikae sana eh, <laughs> utafute gari <laughs> ya kukuleta nyumbani anaanza kukuombea. So we were praying because some of our children were not telling us the truth. They were also lying. Niko hapa TRM tu. Hapa na tunakaa hapa tuko na akina nani hapa na mko na nani hapo mko na nani kule town but some of you are honest they told us they are in town and they helped us pray for them so when we prayed i want to believe god heard god heard god heard you see the first thing that he had for the first time in the history of our Kenyan leaders, something was done. Never mind. Something was done. Never mind. I know you see as some babies, as a tattoo. Never mind. Something was done. Some people were sacked. Never mind. Never. Don't you worry. Something happens. Why? Because you prayed or somebody prayed. So prayer helps us even when there is darkness prayer helps us to, to 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 stay hopeful even when we are in darkness or times are dark prayer help us to feel connected to god on a deeper level 
When I pray to the Lord, there is something that helps me know. Now, Sasa, Ishafika, what else can you do? You relax. Why? Because you are connected to God. You know God is going to do it for us. Very, very quickly in the next two minutes. Prayer can help us deal with difficult emotions and situations that are hard. Prayer can help us find comfort and peace. Prayer can help us develop a stronger relationship with God. Prayer helps us become more compassionate to people. Prayer gives us strength during difficult times. Prayer can help keep our minds and our thoughts clear. Prayer is a way of communicating with Jesus and asking for guidance and support in our lives. So prayer, blessed be the name of the Lord. I want to ask the, the team that was here, the worship team, if they can come, we sing a hymn. And I want us to, to hear those words. What a friend we have in Jesus. Because many times why things don't work is because we don't tell him. We don't pray. We forfeit so many things. We, we need to tell him. And he's asking us, are there trials? Are there temptations? Are you weak? Are you heavy laden? What problems do we have? Can we tell him? Have your friends forsaken you? We can tell him because our God has something for us. And then now give you a minute to open up your mouth and tell him because he is here in our midst. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What a friend we have in Jesus. Shall we all stand and do that song, that hymn? And as we sing, think about what the, it is asking us. What a friend we have in Jesus.